So, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, an algorithm I've been working on um, that's uh, meant for measuring delay at signalized intersections. You can see my screen? Yes? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I'll introduce myself uh, a little bit. Uh, my name is Menno van der Wouden. Um, it's a Dutch name, even people in Austria have difficulties pronouncing it, so that's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm living in Vienna and I'm working here as a freelancer uh, under the name of Coding Connected with a focus on uh, software, uh, so developing software to help uh, create and evaluate TLC programs. That's my main focus. So one of the things, for example, that I've been doing over the last few years in cooperation with uh, many municipalities and engineering companies is creating uh, an open source TLC code generator. It generates C code. It's called TLC Gen. And also I'm working on other open source projects. For example, I've um, implemented a TRACI implementation in C Sharp a couple of years ago. And for today, the most important thing is um, two tools I've been working on, or I'm still working on, YAV and YAVC, which stands for yet another VLOG viewer. And those are tools to work with logging data from traffic light controllers. And the one on the left, so YAV is a standalone application. You can work with data from disk. I'll shortly show what that means. And the other one, is a server client um, application where the server collects and analyzes logging data from signalized intersections. And then um, users can use the client to read data from the database and view um, the logging data and view analyzed logging data. So what's that look like? Or use cases first. So um, municipalities use this for handling complaints, for example. They can have a quite detailed view of uh, what happened um, at the traffic lights. Um, and they can evaluate efficiency, safety, like cross, cross, crossings during red, um, waiting time, stuff like that. You can evaluate into, up to a degree um, how public, public transport is handled at a signalized inter intersection. And a recurring request, and the reason I'm doing this talk also is um, to evaluate time loss based on the um, logging data, um, which is a bit difficult and um, is the reason I've not been doing it so soon, but now I've implemented something. So this is what the program uh, looks like. This is the, um, the client for the server, um, the client side of the client server program. So you show a map with uh, connected intersections where the server side um, collects data. And then the user can use this view to see what happened in the, in the past. Um, and they can switch days on the left and zoom in, zoom out. And you see here when um, green was given, you can see if you switch it on when a request was put for green um, and the blue um, bars indicate when detectors were occupied. Um, so you can also see when um, public transport um, sent a message to the intersection. And in this other view, um, we get to see now, um, we see intensity data that's been um, determined based on the logging data. And again, on the left, you can switch between days um, you can set interval and there's a number of uh, analysis you can choose from, for example, cross during red or now we switch to waiting time. So the, the front of the row, how long is we waiting? Um, so, so a user chooses to get an impression of how the traffic control um, is going on, how it's working. So before I continue with, um, with the, um, the part about what, what it's actually about, so time loss, I want to make a small detour, a crash course of traffic lights a la Hollandaise, because it's, I believe it's a pretty specific way to, to handle traffic lights. Um, for example, in terms of hardware and layout, there's a high degree of separation, especially as opposed to like Vienna where I'm living, where a lot, a lot of intersections um, are first like this and then like this, or so two phases sort of. Uh, there's a high degree of separation, often turn, left turns are separated, right turns are sometimes separated. Uh, cyclists almost always have their own faces. Um, and also it's mostly optimized per intersection. So there's, there's some green waves, but it's mostly still, still these days, it's slowly changing, but it's still optimized per intersection with a highly level detail of control and a lot of detection. So here's what typical detector layers may look like. For a car, you might have uh, one detector, a small one at the stop line and a long one, and then a, um, a short one, like 60 meters or maybe another one, 80 meters from the stop line. For cyclists, usually there's a button and um, um, a detection, so an induction loop. And when there's space, there's often two, one or two detectors also like 20 meters from the stop line. 
And for pedestrians, there's buttons. So here's what it might look like for an uh, arm. So it's relatively a lot of detection, especially compared to uh, other European cases I've seen. Um, and this is still kind of modest. Nowadays, there's still even more detection. Um, and also in terms of software and design, hardware and software are independent. So uh, a manufacturer might manufacture a, a traffic light machine, and then the municipality of Rotterdam, for example, they program uh, at least part of the traffic lights by themselves and have their software loaded on the, on the hardware of the manufacturer. And they design traffic dependent software that defaults to all red. Though sometimes there may be directions that have green normally. Um, and then it's all red and only when there's a request from a detector, so be it a button or an induction loop, there will be green given. And more gr traffic means more green with a maximum, where the maximum differs uh, by the time of the day. And the order is fixed in, in a sense, but it's also very flexible. It works with modules. I won't go into that, but it's a bit different from the um, from what's often, which is often see with also different from the way Sumo handles it, for example. Uh, and important for right now is that there's generic logging. So at least half, maybe two thirds of the con uh, traffic controllers in the Netherlands generate a format called VLog. And it's very convenient because that means that I can write software that handles that format. And then you have this what is what a typical test application may look like. Somebody makes a bitmap and there's an um, application running behind it. We will see it in the video later. Uh, and that's it for the crash course. So everybody passed. Geslaagd means you passed. Great. Um, onwards, time loss. I use this definition. Uh, the time lost at a signalized intersection as opposed to free flow expressed as total hours of time lost by all vehicles, be it all vehicles in the intersection or um, at a um, signal group. Um, so before I started out, set out, set out um, developing it, I thought of a couple of principles and I use VLOG, it's a generic format. It logs signal groups and detectors, so mass detection. Um, so that means also given the resolution that the result for estimating time loss will always remain an estimation. It's never, we, we can never know what happened really. So we always have an, always have an estimation. However, the estimation should be a good ba basis for policy and for, for example, for comparing um, an intersection before and after a certain measure you've taken. Um, and my goal is always to keep it simple. It's, it's, it's very simple, the algorithm, um, but it also makes it very fast and robust. So come to the implementation. Um, at the onset, I only use detectors at the stop line. Uh, at some point I added also looking at long detectors for a little bit. And I split the measurement in two. There's the part before green and the part after green, uh, start green. So before start green during red, I measure the first waiting time. And then during green, I count vehicles and measure the time until a maximum gap occurs. And if the gap occurs, I conclude that the queue is gone. And after the queue is gone, I just count vehicles. And then to calculate time loss, I use the simplest, simplest possible model, a uniform arrival, so every next vehicle has proportionally less time loss and every neck, um, also uniform departure where every next vehicle has proportionally more time loss. And important is to take possible uh, overflow into account. So if there's a jam, um, we have to take it into account. And to do that, I look at it, if there's a, no gap during a, um, a cycle, then I conclude that there's overflow and have to accumulate the time loss. So a small example, we have four cars. Uh, three are lining up. The first vehicle waits 90 seconds. We can conclude that from the data. And then we can start calculating. So um, leaving after start green takes nine seconds for three cars. That's also concluded from the data. And then the calculation is very simple. The first vehicle waits 90 divided by three times three. So this before start green and then 90, nine divided by three times one is 93 seconds. That's the, the, the three seconds after green, after start green. And so it goes on for vehicle two and three. So vehicle three, for example, 90 divided by three times one, the least amount of time before start green and um, nine divided by three, three times three, the most amount of green after start green, uh, amount uh, of delay after start green. And the fourth vehicle has no delay. So we come to a total delay of almost 200 seconds for this example. Uh, I used Sumo to, to test out uh, how this um, actually works. So if it, if it makes any sense, it sounds very simple and I, I wanted to know and to a degree, if it may, would make sense to use this, um, I 
used um, Sumo with Tracy and own implementation in native C. I coupled um, networks, uh, controllers provided by the municipality of Dordrecht and collected time loss per signal group using E3 detectors, so only for cars. I did three runs of 12 hours for two intersections and I modeled uh, 12 hours so it was a um, like morning and evening rush hour in there. So it was also a period in between where it's a bit less busy. And the controllers created VLOG. So I had data from Sumo and the uh, logging data from the controllers. Now here's the first. It's um, yeah, relatively big, but not necessarily very special. Um, yeah, there's nothing really much to say about this. Here you see the front end, which is controlling Sumo via Tracy. And then the results. Here we see the total hours of time loss for the whole intersection. And then in blue, there's Sumo. And in red, there's the um, algorithm. The, so you see a little bit of underestimation. But in general, it looks pretty OK. And these are three runs, the three runs I did. And then now for one run, I'm zooming in for so these two directions that are going straight. Um, you see there's some underestimation sometimes, but overall it comes close. And this is an interesting where direction three here, which is a left turn here. Uh, it has very little space. And the result of that is that there is a um, relatively much underestimation here because cars are lining up um, before they can reach this, um, this lane here. And then the lane will, be, will become empty. The, the algorithm will conclude that there's no more traffic waiting, um, whereas there actually is. So that, that delay of cars waiting before the lane, um, yeah, we, can, we, we cannot know that based on, um, on the data we have. So it's not there. And then I took another intersection that has a train. So it's a bit, a bit, little bit more difficult. And in rush hour, if there's also a lot of trains passing here and um, a lot of traffic, that leads to uh, occasional cues and also like more or less structural cues sometimes. So it was an interesting case to have this also in there. So I simulated also the train that actually passes and um, influences traffic lights. Um, so yes, the results are still okay, I feel. You see a, an overestimation here in all runs and I will shortly show why that's there. Um, so we see it here immediately for the direction 111 here and 102, it looks quite okay. And then for 107 here, where there's a large queue, sometimes you see a structural overestimation, especially in the evening. And I think that's because the queue um, will actually re maybe reach some kind of maximum. And the algorithm at this point will still accumulate. It will dampen a little bit, um, but it will take the accumulated um, delay time to the next cycle and um, it will accumulate too much. So it would be worthwhile looking into um, if you could fix that. On the other hand, I think it's also okay like this because it's a situation that's very hard on based on the data I have to actually accurately um, estimate. Uh, and here we have a similar situation to the other uh, intersection where we see uh, Sumo sees more delay here than the algorithm sees. And that's again, because these are very short um, lanes. And so cars going to the one direction may block cars going to the other direction and um, this um, will leave, uh, cause the algorithm to conclude that there's no more um, queue there. So the conclusions, uh, it's always an estimation. Um, well, that was clear from the onset. On average though, the results come a long way, I feel. And there's underestimation where traffic cannot always reach the lane and overestimation in, in the case of structural jam can, can occur. Um, correct settings, settings are important. So when to decide the line is gone, that's a critical thing. And when to decide that there's overflow is also very important to get that right. Um, for cyclists, you need a different approach. I've already implemented something but it's really quite different from this. Um, and I feel that this is a good basis for comparison. So for a municipality, this, they can, based on this logging data, they can have a clear view of the effect of certain measures. Um, however, you need to be cautious when you start interpreting these results as literal values. It's, um, it comes a long way, but still it can also 
be different from reality. Uh, so that's it. Thank you.